Hi, today I'm going to show you how to build a very basic, very simple income statement using the Excel Refreshable Report Writer for Microsoft Dynamics GP 2010 R2. You can see I'm in Microsoft Dynamics GP right now and I'm in the financial series and I have Excel Report selected. Now I have deployed my Excel Refreshable Report, so if you have Great Plains uh, version 10 or version 2010, you should um, if you don't know how to deploy your reports, please work with your partner on that. Now, I'm going to choose the Excel Refreshable Report to Account Transactions default. Two is my database name. Account Transactions is the smart list I'm choosing, and default would be clicking on the asterisk. It's the same as going into Smart List, going to the Financial Series, choosing account transactions and clicking on the default asterisk and I'm going to end up with just these columns no more no less so I have it highlighted I could either double click or choose to click Excel up at the top and my data will populate accordingly okay great so what we're going to do is add a couple columns to this spreadsheet and then we'll save it so that next month when we want to do an income statement again we just have to pull it up click on data and refresh data here and then on our pivot table click data and refresh again and it's all updated we won't have to reinvent the wheel with smart list each time so the first column that we're going to add is a column for the main account segment because this particular smart list does not have it and the main segment in the sample company is this middle segment of the four digits and so what we're going to do is we're going to first extract the first eight digits the eight digits farthest to the left so that we lob off the dash in the last two and then we'll extract the, from that the far four right digits and it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. We'll do it one piece at a time and it'll make sense to them. So what we're going to do is click on formulas at the top and we're going to choose a text formula and we're going because we just want a certain number of characters so we're going to choose left and then we'll click on the account number field and the next thing it asks us is how many characters do you want here and we want eight and this is what it's going to look like the three first three digits a dash and the last four and that looks good now we just need to get the four right ones now I could create another column and just extract the four rights from here and if that's the way you're comfortable doing it that's fine but what I'm going to do is nest my or, um, nest my statement so right after the equal marks I'm going to type in the word right start parentheses and I'm going to go to the end and say comma four and end parentheses. So what I'm saying is I want the four right characters of the first left eight characters. And now I just end up with my main segment. And because I'm in a table instead of a worksheet, everything I do in this first blank cell, uh, row number two, will copy down for every record. And as I come in and do a data refresh and more data is pulled in, this formula will calculate for those new entries as well to keep me from having to reinvent the wheel every time. The next thing that I'm going to do is decide what my net balance is. So I'm going to type in net. Now for here, in this particular example, if I'm doing an income statement, I want revenue accounts to be positive numbers and expenses to be negative numbers. Now, if you're looking at it or used to looking at it where credits are negative and debits are positive, then you might want to not do it the way I'm going to do it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an if statement. I'm going to look at this main segment, and if the main segment is less than 4,000, that means it's a balance sheet account, and then I'm going to say my, if it's balance sheet, I want debits minus credits so that my assets are positive and my liabilities are negative. But if it's over 4,000, then it must be an income statement account and then I want credits minus debits so that my revenue accounts are positive and my expenses are negative. And to do this, again under formula, I'll choose logical and I'll say if. And I'm going to look at this main segment. If this main segment is less than, and then I'm going to put in uh, quotation marks, 4,000 because my in income accounts start at 4,000 and in this particular line it's true because it's 1100 then what I want to do is debits minus credits. Now I'm clicking in the field, I'm not just typing in the row format because this is a table it needs to have all of that information associated with the table so better to click. If it's not true I want credits minus debits 
And you can see it's the same number, just one is a negative number and one is not. And I'll click OK, and that'll copy all the way down for me as well. The next column I want to create is one called Type. And this is probably, or no doubt, this will be the most complicated column we create. And what we're going to do here is we're going to decide, looking at this main segment, if it's an asset, a liability, or equity, um, income, cost of goods sold, or expense. Okay, so we're going to define which of those five categories it belongs to. And what we're going to do is create an if statement, and we'll start with the assets. So I'll, again, I'll do logical, if the main segment is less than 2000 because my liability started 2000 and again in this case it's true i want the word assets to appear and for the end statement i'm going to write expenses okay great and now you can see i have a few assets and then this one which starts with a two says expenses. So now I need to account for my liabilities. Now I'm going to nest a lot here so it's going to look a little bit confusing but in Excel 2010 you can have up to 64 nested statements so we want to be able to account, uh, utilize that technology. So I'm going to copy everything in the formula except the equal marks and where it says expenses I'm going to delete all that out and paste in my calculation. So now it reads, if it's less than 2,000 an asset, if it's not, I'm going to change it to, is it less than 4,000? And if it is, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to call it liability and, you know what, I'll just make it liabilities. And we'll let equity be assumed in that as well. And I'll save that. And now you can see I now have liabilities in here. And in some cases, though, here, you know, we need to account for other entries as well. So keep going. We're going to back out of the last expense and come in and paste that back in and say, is it less than 4500 And if it is, it must be income. If it's not, it's expenses. And now you can see we have income out here as well. And we're going to erase over the expenses again. I told you this was the most complicated one. And again, you might want to take advantage of using multiple columns to create this for you. There's no shame in that. And this time, if it's less than 5000 the answer is cost of goods sold, otherwise expenses. So we have, if it's less than 2000 it's an asset. If it's greater than 2000 or greater, is it less than 4000 If it is, it's a liability. If it's 4000 or greater, is it less than 4500 If it is, it's income. If not, is it less than 5000 If it is, it's cost of goods sold. If it's not, it's an expense. And now we should have all five of our categories listed here for some of the accounts. And again, that was the most complicated one. Now we got two really simple ones. We've got month and we've got year. And these are very simple. We're going to use a calculation to extract the month and extract the date from the transaction date field. So in my first blank row, uh, row number two for month, I'll choose date and time under my formulas. I'll select month and I'll select the transaction date. And now you can see the month start to populate. And I'll do the same thing for year. Whoops. Let me go to my formula, date and time, enter in a year, and click that as well. So now I have my year. So you can see I have multiple months, all 12 months, and indeed I also have multiple years. And those are the only columns that we, oh, one more column. We want to add one more column. Let's add a column called account. And what I'm going to do here is take the actual account number and the account description and put them together into one field so it'll make it easier for my pivot table. And this is called, because these are both text fields, this is called concatenation sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Under formulas, I'll choose text and I'll choose concatenate. So what's text field number one? My account number. Text field two, three spaces. Text field three, the account description. So you can see how it's going to read. Account number, space, 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 and account description. I'll click OK and now I have all the fields I need. So let's start creating our income statement. I'm going to click on a new worksheet, I'll click on insert, 
pivot table and pivot table. And it says, which data do I want? So I'll go back to my first worksheet and select every single column that we have out there, which goes from column A to M. You can see it right there, column A to M. And I'll click OK. And now I'm in my pivot table work area. Now this is very simple to do. What we're about to do is pretty cool and pretty fun. Um, I'm going to grab a count number first and put it down in my row label so I can see all my count numbers. Okay, I just wanted you to see how easy that was. Let's drag it back. I don't want that in there first. The first thing I want in there is that one we entered called type. So I want you to drag type into rows. Now we can see our different kinds of rows. Now they're not in the order that I want them to be. I want them to be the same order I keyed them in. Asset, liability, um, income, cost of goods sold, and expenses. You can see they pretty much put them in alphabetical order. So to change this, because there's only five and there's only going to be five, to change this, I'm going to click on the one I want first, assets, and I'll right mouse click, I'll choose move, and I'm going to move it to the end. Then I'm going to choose the second one I want, I'll highlight it, right mouse click, move, move to end. Then I'll choose the next one, income statement, right mouse click, move, move to end. Cost of goods sold, right mouse click, move, move to end. And then finally expenses, move to end and I'll put the blank at the very end. I do it this way because then I can control the order much easier. Now they're in the order that I want them to appear. So now let's drag the account number and we're going to drop it below account or below type. So now I can collapse up and look at account numbers in the order I want to see them in. Okay, so that's really kind of cool. What we're going to do then is take the net amount we created and drop it into values and by default it counts. So I'm going to open up assets so you can see it counting. We want it to show up as a numeric number, not as a count, as currency. So under values in the right, I'll choose from the drop down list. I'll choose value field setting. I'm going to change it to sum them as opposed to count. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and click on number format and change it to currency. And then if it's a negative, make it uh, red and in parentheses. And the reason you want to do that, if you're working with very large numbers, you'll end up with a calculation instead of the actual number if you do not change it to currency. So we'll click OK. And now you can see my currency amounts. And most of my assets are positive numbers. Most of my income are positive numbers. And you can see my expenses are most really are negative numbers, and that's the way I want them to appear. OK, great. This is great. Let's on row labels, choose from the drop down list and unselect assets, liabilities, and expenses. So we're only left with income, cost of goods sold, and expenses. Then what we're going to do, to look at an account for one period, we're going to take the year and drag it into report filter and then from this drop down list select the year. Great. Then we're going to take the month and drag the month into column. And you can see it does kind of a trend statement. It drags all of my columns out. So I can look at all of my income and expenses side by side. I can also come in and actually let me drag this in a little and select just the periods that I'm interested in. If I'm just interested in period four, I can select that one as well. Now, a really cool thing that you might want to do is take the year and drag it over. Now, if you do it this way, you're looking at period four years side by side. But what I want to do is drag the month below the year, so I have year and month. Let's go back to the column label here. And I don't want years, I want to look at months. So in the select field, I'll choose from the drop down and select month because I have two fields in my column. And I'm going to do a quarterly statement for each one. Now what you see is period one, period two, period three. These are fiscal or calendar periods. And then I have my year to date for quarter one. Same thing for quarter two. Same thing for quarter three or the next year and so forth. This is a really cool way to look at information. If you're on a fiscal year, you may need to use the default Excel report that shows everything so that the period and the year are all set for you or you need to may, maybe make some adjustments for that in here. 
but you can still make this happen for you. So we have this little mini income statement and so forth. That's kind of cool. And one of the things that I also love about it is you could take a pivot chart and make a pivot chart out of it by selecting the pivot chart and populating it. Now you have to be careful. If there's a lot of fields open, it will look a bit junky. And in this case, it looks a bit junky. But if I collapse up all my types, then I've got this lovely little statement here where I can see my incomes year by year, cost of goods sold, and expenses. Excel with Microsoft Dynamics GP is a powerful way to work. Hope this helps. Thanks.